Liam Neeson's portrayal of Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace, the first film in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, was probably one of the movie's best parts. Neeson shared most of his screen time with Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he never returned to the theatrical prequels aside from an audio cameo in Attack of the Clones. Now Qui-Gon Jinn has returned to Disney Plus and left us all crying. Let's find out why. Firstly, McGregor and Neeson's reunion. The performers were finally reunited in the Obi-Wan Kenobi mid credit scene. Neeson appeared in a panel interview and talked openly about reuniting with McGregor on screen. He spoke about his emotional return to the Star Wars franchise, according to Collider. He went on to say that seeing McGregor again after 25 years made them both break down on set. Neeson recalled that in his scene, he got to ride an actual camel. Obi-Wan was supposed to appear riding it, and before filming it, they rehearsed the scene. And after they finished, the pair started weeping, and the entire set applauded them. Sounds like a beautiful moment that came after a long wait of almost 25 years. The Phantom Menace was released in 1999, and much of the audience that watched it at that time had all grown up. But still, their love and admiration for Neeson's character are apparent, with the internet blowing up after that episode. Neeson has never been hesitant to express his appreciation for the series or the role he played. In three episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars, he provided Qui-Gon Jinn's voice, and in The Rise of Skywalker, he added another audio appearance. In truth, we have been waiting for this reunion for more than 20 years, but the performers have been waiting much longer. Neeson had to wait a long time before changing back into his Jedi robes because of the way that filming is done, and getting to witness his reunion with McGregor and how the Disney Plus series will end with the two of them, it justified the wait completely. Next up, his future with Lucasfilms. Even if it was the last time we saw Quagon, it would still be nice to have him be there for Obi-Wan and respond to his calls for help when he knew he needed it. That relationship is extremely similar to the one we were all familiar with and adored in the prequels. Although it's unclear whether Neeson is going to return as his appearance felt more like like a one-time cameo. Qui-Gon Jinn could return as a force ghost, and we might even get another season of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which we are desperately hoping is going to happen. Knowing that Neeson and McGregor cried while practicing the scene will make watching Obi-Wan Kenobi even sadder. He will reprise his role once more in the animated collection Tales of the Jedi, starting next month. Michael Richardson, Neeson's son, will fill the part for the flashback short that examines Qui-Gon's previous life as Count Dooku's Padawan. On October 26, all six of the Tales of the Jedi short films will make their Disney Plus debut. More on why Liam Neeson returned to Star Wars. Liam Neeson returned to play Qui-Gon for Obi-Wan Kenobi, but why? Money probably exchanged hands for just half an hour labor was undoubtedly a big factor. He has already expressed his reluctance to act in TV series though, despite Neeson having a occasionally performed in supporting roles in TV programs in the past. He admitted that he's a bit of a TV snob, but at the same time, didn't want anyone else to portray that character, so he appeared in the last episode. Ewan is a close buddy of his, and working with him again must have been wonderful. The actor jokingly recalled how he got all dressed up in Los Angeles in front of a green screen just to have three lines of dialogue. Additionally, he did it out of respect for George Lucas. The man responsible for creating the Star Wars universe. Neeson couldn't stop admiring him, adding that in the universe he built in his day, every culture and nation had a mythical element connected to it. With today's technology, George Lucas might have produced a Star Wars epic, unlike anything we could have dreamed of. He was truly too smart for his time. Finishing off with, will there be a season 2? We're all wondering if there will be a second season of Obi-Wan Kenobi. That seems possible given the show's success and every everyone's desire to continue producing it. That is, of course, if someone can conjure up a compelling enough tale to justify it. We had all been hesitant about Kenobi. While it was good overall, there were occasions when we wished it had been far better. No Leia, no Vader, and more Qui-Gon Jinn are the three things we would want to see in Season 2. They stretched and pushed the canon and lore as far as they could, without severely detracting from the overarching plot. That implies that there shouldn't be any more contact with Vader or Leia.
area. The main thing is that neither can contact Kenobi again without it becoming too much that it unravels the continuity of the original saga. So why bother with bringing them back? Season 2 should center on Obi-Wan learning from Qui-Gon. Would he even be up for it, since it would involve a lot more involvement by Liam Neeson? Right now, who knows? Let's first wait and see whether he actually comes back. Both Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen stated that they hoped this wasn't the final time, and they would like to do more. Similar to this, Christensen said he would want to keep playing Darth Vader for as long as he is able. In other related news, starting off with fanfic Star Wars becoming a movie. Nowadays, it happens more frequently than ever before for a writer to draw inspiration from a well-known love story and create their own. The after books and movies are based on Harry Styles' fan fiction, while the Fifty Shades of Grey film starring Dakota Johnson are based on erotica that originated as Twilight fan fiction. The Love Hypothesis, a best-selling romance novel that got its start owing to Star Wars' Raylo, is the newest movie that will be impacted by imaginative shippers. Raylo might be a term you're not familiar with. The problematic Star Wars romance, which was frequently the focus of the sequel trilogy, was resolved with a kiss between Adam Driver's Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo and Daisy Ridley's Rey. Ben died in Rey's embrace just moments after the affectionate exchange in 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, which left followers of the romance heartbroken. Raylo gave Ali Hazelwood the idea for her 2021 book, The Love Hypothesis, which is currently being turned into a motion picture. Moving on to Christian Bale in the Lucasfilms universe. With his latest performance as Gore the God Butcher in Thor Love and Thunder, Christian Bale has gained new fans. However, there is one character in another franchise that he would enjoy playing to appease his inner child. The Dark Knight trilogy's Oscar-winning actor said that he could be persuaded to join the Star Wars franchise, but only if it meant carrying on a surprising legacy. He wants to play the infamous but unnamed stormtrooper who smacked his head against the doorframe in the background of A New Hope. He went on to say that all he's ever wanted in Star Wars was to wear a stormtrooper outfit and walk through a door while hitting his head on it. Yeah, we were just as surprised as you probably are. The real nerds who binge-watched Star Wars many times have always been aware of the particular moment in which the stormtrooper knocks his head against the door as he enters. Bale aspired to be precisely that person. However, if he's fortunate enough to be more, then yes. He also fangirled as he said how fun that would be. The figures from when he was little are still with him too, apparently, because she was working with Spielberg when Empire of the Sun was being made and is now in charge of the Star Wars universe. Kathy Kennedy and Bale are also extremely familiar with one another, finishing off with Liam Neeson in memory. Even those who have usually admired Liam Neeson's recent string of tough guy parts occasionally overlook that he is also a brilliant performer. Martin Campbell, a legendary action director, helmed his most recent movie, Memory. It is a nice reminder that Neeson isn't acting impulsively just because he's kicking someone's ass. The Memory of a Killer, a 2003 Belgian thriller, is remade in this movie, which follows a hitman with early onset Alzheimer's. However, the narrative device used to depict dementia is more of a plot device than a serious examination of the crippling condition. However, Neeson, who was already a very physical performer before he began playing characters with unique abilities, captures the character's fragility, sorrow, and terror so effectively that he transforms a ridiculous story point into something emotional. That's a wrap for this video, and thanks for watching. What did you think of Neeson and McGregor's reunion? And did you shed a tear when they appeared on screen? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.